This film will cover the main points you need to understand in relation to having radioactive iodine therapy so that you can make the most of your time with a nuclear medicine consultant and physicist, clarifying anything you don't understand and asking any questions you may have after seeing the film. The film is also available on the Royal Free Hospital Trust website, so you can watch it there if you want to remind yourself about the information you've been given. You've been diagnosed with an overactive thyroid. That is, your thyroid is producing too much of the hormone thyroxin. You've been referred to us for radioactive iodine therapy, which is used to reduce the amount of thyroxin you're producing to within the normal range. There's no doubt that an overactive thyroid gland needs treatment, as if left untreated, it can cause many health problems, including heart disease. Leaving things alone is not an option. There are three ways of treating this condition. Tablets can be used in the short term, but they can have side effects in some patients, and the condition may return once you stop taking them. Surgery can be used to permanently remove the thyroid gland. Some patients prefer not to have surgery unless their thyroid is particularly large or squashing other things in the neck. Radioactive iodine therapy is an easy, permanent solution and is now the standard treatment worldwide for dealing with an overactive thyroid, having an excellent safety record since it was first used in the early 1940s. The radioiodine is swallowed in a capsule and the thyroid gland takes up the iodine because it's the body's raw material for making the hormone thyroxin. Any iodine not taken up by the thyroid passes out of the body when you go to the toilet. Once the radioiodine is in the thyroid, the radioactivity begins to kill some of the cells so that they are no longer able to make thyroxin and the overall level of the hormone in your body begins to fall. The effect is not instant as the treatment can take some weeks to work. The radioiodine doesn't kill off all the cells in your thyroid gland. You would need about 10 times more iodine for this to happen. If you're suitable for radioactive iodine therapy and are happy to go ahead with the treatment, we'll work out the correct amount of radioiodine required for all the information we have about you and order the treatment. Antithyroid tablets, for example carbimazole, may need to be stopped before treatment. We'll discuss your particular case and advise you and let you know if you should restart taking your tablets. The treatment is usually effective after one dose but occasionally further treatment is necessary. We can tell how you're doing by blood testing. The first blood test should be about five weeks after your treatment, in time for an outpatient appointment at about six weeks after treatment. There are three possible outcomes and everyone reacts differently, even to the same dose. The optimum outcome is that your thyroxine levels fall to within the normal range, stay within this range and you won't need any further treatment. Another possibility is that though the levels come down to normal initially, they don't stay within the normal range but start to increase again. If this happens, we'll repeat the treatment after six months. The more likely outcome is that the thyroxine levels fall within the normal range but then continue to fall, going below the normal so your thyroid then becomes underactive. If this happens, you can take thyroxine replacement tablets, probably for life, to achieve and maintain normal range hormone levels. It may sound strange to be giving a treatment that could cause another problem, but an underactive thyroid is much safer for you than your current overactive thyroid and is easy to treat with no side effects. Most patients don't notice any immediate side effects with this treatment, though occasionally a sore throat or swelling in the neck is reported, rather like having a cold, and simple painkillers should help with this. You may also feel a little tired for a couple of days, so just rest. Some patients with Graves' disease also have eye problems. If this is the case and you are not on prednisolone, you may need to take some before or after your radioiodine therapy, as there is a small risk of the eye disease worsening, especially if you smoke. Very rarely, patients experience an increase in the symptoms of their overactive thyroid and can feel very unwell. If this happens, you should see a doctor, either go to A&E or to your GP, but remember, this reaction is very unlikely. There has been over 60 years of experience in giving this treatment, and there's no evidence of any increased risk of cancer or leukaemia. We advise women not to get pregnant for six months after the treatment, and men not to father a child for four months. You shouldn't have this treatment if you're pregnant or are breastfeeding, as it could be harmful to the baby. 
Women will be asked to sign a pregnancy disclaimer form and may also be asked to take a pregnancy test. This treatment has great benefits to you in treating your overactive thyroid, but it does mean that you'll be radioactive for a period of time. Those around you will therefore also receive a small dose of radiation, but this is easily managed and kept to a minimum by following simple precautions. Each person will have individually tailored precautions based on the national guidelines for this treatment. The precautions vary depending upon the amount of radiation you require for your treatment, your lifestyle and your particular working environment. The program will cover how to look after yourself and how to protect those you come into contact with at home, in the workplace and the general public. Most of the radioactive iodine is taken up by the thyroid gland which then becomes a source of radiation. The rest leaves your body in your urine, sweat and other bodily fluids during the first few days after the treatment and during this time it's important to take these simple hygiene precautions. Drink plenty of water to help with the process of washing the iodine out of your body, reducing the time that it spends in your bladder. Flush the toilet twice after each use and wash your hands thoroughly. Follow good hygiene practice when preparing food for others. For example, if you taste food, don't put the spoon straight back in the pot and wash all your crockery and cutlery thoroughly after use. Following these good hygiene precautions for the first three days will deal with most of the issues. As soon as you've taken the capsule, you become a source of radiation. You can limit the radiation dose to the people you come into contact with by using the time and distance principle. Reduce the time you spend in close contact with people. Increase your distance from people you spend time with. You'll be given specific advice relating to your own particular situation about how long you should follow the precautions for. But during the first three days, we advise everyone to avoid situations where they would be in prolonged close contact with people. Places such as cinemas, restaurants and sports events where you'd be sitting very close to the same person for over an hour. Or travelling on public transport for longer than an hour. For example, going from London to Edinburgh by train would not be advised during this time. It is especially important to consider this point in relation to going home after your treatment. We can advise you if you need to travel a long way on public transport or are being driven home. After the first three days there are two groups of people to consider. The first group are those you come into contact with regularly, the people you live with and those you work with every day. The second are those people you pass in the street or only see every so often. The most important restrictions apply to the first group, your family and friends and anyone else who you come into contact with regularly and frequently. You should use the time and distance principles for about two weeks with these people to reduce possible radiation exposure. Here are some examples of how to use the principles in practice. Don't share a bed with your partner. Increase your distance by either sleeping in separate beds as far apart as possible or in different rooms. It's okay to have sex during this time, but remember to reduce the time you spend in close contact. Don't sit together all evening. Increase your distance by sitting at least one meter apart on separate chairs and remember to reduce the time you spend in close contact. Depending on the nature of your work, and the length of time you spend in close contact with your colleagues, you may need to take some time off work or make modifications to your working practices. We advise extended precautions should be followed with young children and pregnant women who you see frequently and are generally close to. The principles are the same. Increase your distance from them and reduce your time with them. But you should follow the restrictions for longer, possibly up to four weeks. We will discuss your particular family and work situation with you in detail and advise you on your specific programme. For the second group of people, those people you see only infrequently for a short time or the general public that you pass in the street or in the supermarket aisle, there are no restrictions to follow. Please don't worry that you will forget anything. After you have had the treatment, your specific timings will be written on a yellow card for you to take home with you. Please keep it with you at all times until you no longer have to follow any of the instructions. 
If you need urgent medical attention, you should show the card to healthcare staff so they know you have received the radioactive iodine treatment and can take the necessary precautions. If you're travelling abroad, passing through ports or airports during the first three months after treatment, we recommend that you carry the card with you. Some security devices are so sensitive they may pick up the radiation even after this length of time and the card will explain your situation to the authorities. When you are happy with everything that's been discussed, you'll be asked to sign the consent form and we will book you in for your treatment. Depending on the medication you're taking, you'll usually come in within a week. However, there is some flexibility to allow you to have the treatment at a time that's convenient for you. If you have any questions about your condition or treatment, you'll be able to ask the consultant and physicist when you see them. And if you need to get in touch with the department for further advice following your treatment, our contact details are on the yellow card.